That's Alex Megos. That's me, and that's Bibliography when it was still a project. I've climbed with Alex in Australia, Europe, and that one time in Japan. And aside from Bibliography, I've laid him on multiple 9As and had several fun hard boulder sessions with him. And I was always impressed by his climbing, not just for how strong he was, but the approach as well. When I belayed him on bibliography in 2018, he had it down to three sections and looked very convincing on them. The sections were ground to rest, rest to rest, rest to top. Splitting a project into sections and coming up with your stepping stone goals isn't exactly groundbreaking and it's something that I'm sure you're familiar with or at least heard of. But what really knocked my socks off with Alex was how deliberate he was with these goals. On this day, Alex was looking to decrease the amount of time that he was spending at each of these rests. And it wasn't just, oh yeah, my arms feel pretty good, let's just go. He was training on the route in the same way that you might decrease your rest periods at the gym. Using the outdoors to train isn't just about running laps. The next step on this project, he said, was to link the two upper sections together. He'd pull through the first AB plus easy section and take a nice long sit on the draw, essentially getting to the point where it would feel like he'd kind of just stepped off the ground. Then drop the clutch and give it some curry. Carrot, curry. Once doing that link once, he'd then do it again and really try to nail in the physical aspect, but also the mental wins of knowing that I can do these sections on link. If that were me on that route, I'd have basically just gone from the ground and done my best might fall off in that middle section and maybe come back to the start of that bit and try and get my way through, but it'd be an afterthought, not the main goal of that tie-in. Adam ondra has been doing the same thing on his projects up in Flattinger. He'd be jumaring up to that crux or those cruxes and trying to just do that link and not worrying about that bit there or this bit up here. It's just this section. He was also doing it in Margalef on Perfecto Mundo and just skipping the first like four bolts or something that was 8A or something like that and just concentrating on the hard bit. The theory being that this is kind of the easy part and what's the point of continuing to climb on this if you already know it, you're gonna be knackering yourself and destroying your skin unnecessarily. If the main goal is to do bigger links on the harder sections, then just concentrate on that. The fitness that you get from doing those hard links is gonna pay dividends for the easy stuff anyway. I've taken this approach to my own climbing and found it very useful. These climbers aren't just strong, they're also clever. Another thing that really impressed me were the two versions of Alex that would show up to the cliff. We'd be walking up to the crag, chatting, joking, we'd do a few warm-ups, have a cup of tea, and just generally goof about. And then you'd see him get ready for his project, and he'd go and do some recruitment, and get his body kind of fired up, ready to go. And you could just see him start to dip into this red point headspace. Then he'd tie in, get his shoes on, ready to go, and you'd see him really click into it. And he'd be blocking out all of the noise and all the unnecessary chatter, and it was game time. I'm gonna make it happen. I watched Adam Andra try, then send three degrees of separation on one trip to Sayus, and he had the same switch on thing. You'd see him joking about at the bottom of the cliff, frothing to people about climbing, and then it's game time. Bam, I'm here to make it happen. So often we underestimate the prep and kind of pre-game routine that we could be doing to get ourselves into that headspace. I don't really think we're gonna get the best out of ourselves if we're just chatting about the footy or some annoying thing that happened at work that week and then start climbing up your project and expecting that you're gonna get the best out of yourself mentally and physically. I'd suggest having a go at what might work for you. It might not need to be sitting under a root getting into a meditative headspace and climbing it in your mind before you pull off the ground. Although I have done that once before and it worked really well. But a little switch on routine before you pull off the ground, I think is gonna be a good thing. It could be as simple as breathing in through your nose, eyes closed, nice, sharp, deliberate breath out, looking at the cliff. That's one that I come back to all of the time and it just, gets me fired up. Next time you're watching the Climbing World Cup, just have a look at what the climber does before they pull off the ground. Almost all of them have got a little like switch on thing that they do. It's pretty cool. If you have found this video useful so far, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. It helps spread the video out to more people and we can help and 
grow this community together. Also, I'd be interested to know what maybe you've picked up watching other climbers. I think if you approach things with a bit of curiosity, there's always something to learn. The last thing that Alex really opened my eyes to was back in 2015 when he was here in Australia. His entire time in the country, he didn't take a rest day. It was like 30 or 40 days or something. And he was red pointing grade 33 or V12 pretty much every single day. And the days that he wasn't doing something like that, he was running laps on something like Mechanical Animals, which he did five times that day. It's this super bouldery 33. And then he came home and did a rings TRX session in the shed. He just had this insatiable appetite to train and try hard and do more. And it made me realize... Doggy! The lesson for me here was that Alex and all the other pro climbers don't get to where they are for free. The amount of work that they put in at and away from the cliff to be the absolute very best that they can be, it's astonishing. It's easy to sit there and think that there's some crazy natural talent or unfair advantage, but when you peel back the curtain, you just see that there's just a lot of work behind that. Whenever I hang out with climbers that are that much better than me, I'm left feeling inspired and a thought that maybe I just need to get off my butt a little bit more because there are things out there that I really want to do and they're not going to climb themselves. Sends don't just land in your lap and you need to work for them. So I might look to add in one extra route at the end of the day or just be a little bit more switched on during my training session to try and get the most out of it. It's all the little things that add up for a big win. And sometimes you just need to throw your hat over the fence and really commit to a big goal. And if you want to know more about that, you can check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.